All right, we're gonna make this t-shirt all rusty and whatnot. And so we have this bucket of rusty bits. How do you get your own bucket of rusty bits? Do you wander around and look for rusty bits on the ground and then throw them into a piece of uh, semi-disposable Tupperware? No, what you do is you take a bunch of stuff that will rust and you throw them in here. And then you pour a bunch of vinegar on it and then you wait a bit. Uh, water also helps. Build this up over time. Uh, and then you'll have a nice collection of neat, rusty things. And make sure they're not all the same shape. Variety is the spice of making things look not the same all the time. Prepare the t-shirt surface with some water. And this... Um, will prevent uh, things from having too much of a hard edge outline when you do it. But what I like to do is don't get it, don't get all the parts wet, right? Because you want some of that hard edge outline every now and then. Just kind of, you know, randomize it. Make some parts wetter than others. The way I do it is I put a bunch of this stuff on the shirt and then I roll the shirt up and then I kind of tie it together, uh, tie it up with some paracord. So you get it moist. Don't forget under the arms. See, I'm doing the side like this. You see the, see the seam here? I, I put the shirt on its side so that when you do your rusting, the pattern, the, the, the rust doesn't just abruptly stop at the front or the back. You know, there's a transition here. It looks like it's all encompassed with rust. When we get done, it shouldn't look like we did it in sections. So instead of the t-shirt going around the rust, it, the rusty stuff, it should look like, oh, the environment was the rust, you know? It's like the world it lived in was rusty and disgusting and whatnot. So we want to avoid it looking like it was made in sections. That's the number one thing that we want to do. You spray more area than you're really going to be working with. And that way, if it leaches uh, from one part to another, there's not that hard, see that hard line going down there? You don't want that. So overspray a bit. Make sure you get down in the seams, you know, the, the, hemmed, the hemmed area at the bottom which, if you're going to distress it, should be the, like, the first thing that you attack when you start doing the mechanical distress, like attacking it with knives and punji stakes and, and snaggy things, nails, files, sandpaper. One of the first things we want to do is we want to take care of this underarm area with a few rusty bits. And let's go for some... And, and Okay, notice I'm wearing gloves. These are kind of thickish gloves. These are probably two or three times as thick as your regular nitrile gloves. That will help because these are kind of pointy and this is all rusty and gross and nasty and stuff. Um, you want to get weird looking pieces, you know? You don't want to make them too obvious. When you put them on there, you want to wet them up too. And uh, what I like to use is uh, some more vinegar to help transfer the rust into the fabric. If you look on there, it's like, oh, the rust is already on there. Why, why do you need to, like, roll them up and stuff? Well, the effect that you'll get is really neat. When you roll it and you apply some pressure, there will be some uh, divots, you know, some... It'll look more like the rust is actually in the fabric instead of, oh, I got some rust on there. <laughs> because you could put a rust effect on this uh, with paint, you know, fabric paint or whatever. You could paint this like a painting and, and make it look rusty, but this has an authenticity that would be difficult. I mean, it, it's possible, but you're going to spend a lot more time getting that authentic look of... The rust actually being part of the fabric and being you'll you'll see when we pull it out it'll be in, it's like there are indentations where the rust has 
gathered and pooled and, and pulled itself and been pulled into the fabric. I like to take these metal bits uh, from various things that I take apart, toss them in there, and now you've got a really interesting shape for your, for your rusting. See this wrench? Like that came from like some kind of Ikea style flat pack thing or I don't know, something. Something, I don't know. I don't make them. I don't keep track of where, I don't know what his, who his dad is. Get yourself a spray bottle and put some vinegar in it. And also do one with water, you know. Personally, I have my very own rusty vinegar blend that I keep. Uh, I wash out the tub of rusty crap with vinegar and I pour that vinegar into this thing. Use a funnel for God's sake. And then I have a nice dribbly, watch this. Instead of like just squirting it on there, you dribble it and it makes pools. And when it pools up, it makes a pretty fantastic effect. And you'll notice it like splashes, it goes, wow, you know, there's like, there's a explosion of rust. So I like to get a little bit of that on there, you know, give it a little, give it a little love. And I, yeah, I do do some dribbling on it and stuff. But one of the things, and, and I'll cover this in a later video, but you can take these bottles and you can dribble stuff in there. And then you take a different color or a different, you know, you take a paint color and you try to get in that same spot. Uh, there we go. It can combine to make a really neat if, you know, two-tone effect that blends, you know, they blend into each other and it just, we'll take a look at this when we come back and you'll see what I'm talking about. The way I discovered, because I'm the first person to ever dribble paint or rust onto a piece of fabric, first person in history. I hung up one shirt that, that I, I had done like a grime layer on it where I just, you know, dunked the whole thing into a uh, a bucket with uh, a very diluted fabric paint and water uh, combination. I hung it up and it was dribbling. You know, I put some I put some other pieces of work under it to catch it because I figured, oh, well, I might as well not let that go to waste. And as it dribbled down, it just made really great patterns. So I like to have a lot of projects going at the same time so that as one is in one stage, I can use the others to clean up after it. When, when this one's done with this part, I can use it kind of as a shop rag to pick up the paint or the rest or whatever else I'm doing with something else. You know, if it's bleach, you know, whatever, it's like, oh, I've got this crap all over the table, so... Because it doesn't... It doesn't matter. That's the brilliance, is the... Is the pardon me, the, the randomness of the, the chaos, you know. I like to embrace that chaos of my horrifically messy, you know, projects everywhere uh, workshop here. And that's what you should do when you're placing your things, Segway. You should embrace chaos. Check out this spring. This rusty ass spring. Look at that, it's flaking off. Oh, look at Oh no, oh no. Oh no, I got I got rust all over the shirt. I'm doing this. Oh no. Whatever shall I do? Yeah, there's there are gonna be some rust pieces that are like flaky and they're like mostly metal. It's gonna happen. You just you shake it off. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna try to do here is uh, roll this thing up. Okay. Make sure you have you know coverage. I mean, it just depends on how goofy you want this thing to be. You know, it's coming down to, to this kind of area. You can put stuff there. It might fall out. But there are going to be a couple of areas where you'll have to uh, 
you know, do some makeup, it's like, oh, there's, I need some more crap up here by the collar. Give it a little flirt. There we go. And a little bit of love from the vinegar, the rusty vinegar juice. The rusty sauce. You can get these at your home center, and these are great uh, for hurting yourself if you have like a, a bucket full of metal things and you reach in and you you want to hurt yourself put a couple of these in here when you do this rolling up of your uh of your cloth of your material of your piece your artistic piece um these make nice pokey holes and you notice i have like smashed some of them down so it doesn't white look like a pattern as much and some of them I kind of dulled so it doesn't <clears throat> it doesn't look like oh hey I took this stamp and went ur, 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 made some holes. only a few of them will snag and that's good enough I'm gonna make a, a stick kind of device with one of these with, a, with like a random pattern of spiky bits and I so it's like a hammer so I can just go ur, 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 and smash it smash it on stuff and it'll make holes because making holes is like uh, something you got to do in, in this uh, in this line of work here in this, in this business and it is a business for me I make no bones about that well it's not really I don't know yeah it's kind of a business. I love making this stuff and I need to get it the hell out of my house and the way to do that is by selling it. Be careful when folding things, because if I have this, if I have this setup here of these, uh, of these little trinkets, and then I go like this, and I cover it with a with a piece of material directly adjacent to it, then guess what we're going to have? We're going to have a Rorschach test of, oh, this looks the same as this, but backwards. You could want that kind of effect, like, oh, this was a, used as a shop rag, and like somebody put this stuff in it and threw it on the ground. All right, so I'm going to refrain from putting, folding this flap over, and we'll just worry about that later. As a matter of fact, how about we worry about it right now? With a little bit of that, there you go. There you go, Slappy, take that. So anyway. You roll, you, you roll, you roll the thing with the stuff in it, and then I'll just take that flap and move it around there. So now you got kind of a, you got kind of a burrito, of, uh, of t-shirt and rusty metal and vinegar, and it smells fantastic. Let me tell you. Shit, that's another thing you have to watch out for stuff falling out like if you have nails and stuff you don't want them to fall in your garage or in your kitchen you know and like uh, harm you or uh, puncture your vehicle's tires or you know your child's esophagus or something so just be aware oh, this is a dangerous dangerous uh, little hobby we have going here Get back in there, you little scamp. And then we wait. All right, it has been approximately 24 hours since we rust dyed, rolled up this little burrito of funk. Yeah, I put a little rubber band on there so it would hold this end tight. So I cheated. I cheated. All right, let's see what we got here. Make sure you have somewhere. Um, that you can unroll this uh, without getting it, uh, without getting all these little pieces all over the floor. And let's look at what we have. I'll probably get a copyright strike for humming that little tune, even though I don't know what it was. And it's like just one that I made up. I hope you like it. I'm going to be selling it in my SoundCloud store. Uh, Apple Music. It's a banger. I know. Yeah. 
There you go, and you see there's a bunch of flakes. Not just the one running the camera. <laughs> little gems. There we go, a little underarm action there. Yeah, see the shapes, see the colors, see the grime. Yes, yes, yes indeed. There's our little spot that we did yesterday. The combination of uh, dripped rust and dripped uh, uh, fabric uh, paint right there. And that makes a nice, a nice effect there, I think. It's like, oh, there's rust under it, but there's rust on it and in it. Ugh, it's good. And there's, uh, there's where we put the spring And uh, let me get a kind of a glamour shot of it here. And uh, from rolling it, we got a bunch of uh, we got a bunch of nice effect on other parts of the shirt as well. This is the uh, upper uh, right hand quadrant uh, area thing, dubage, and that came out nice. And that's from being rolled with all this stuff that was on this part. And so you can see the sleeve isn't going to have this break in the seam where, you know, oh, I did the front and then I did the back. No, it's, it encompasses it. It's, the rest has circumnavigated and done its little work all over the place. So it's uh, that one operation took care of a good portion of this shirt. Ah, here we go. Here's a good. Here's a good spot where that where that indented. I'll try to show it a little bit better. And that, those indentations will come, they'll be more prominent the, the tighter you bind it. I didn't bind this one that tight. So I am really happy with this. After this, after you get it you know, as rusty as you want it. Uh, you want to wash this in salt water so that the rust stays affixed to the fabric. Get yourself a, a bucket. I haven't uh, done any uh, scientific uh, testing of uh, how much salt, how much water you should use, but I would say try to use a minimum amount of water with a whole bunch of salt like sometimes I go for like uh, you know the the standard uh, two containers of uh, table salt I would take maybe a quarter of that for for one for this shirt I don't know maybe that's too much maybe it's not enough it, it seems to be enough because I haven't had any I haven't had this run out wash it in the salty water and just let it sit for a while I usually let mine sit for I don't know half an hour an hour um, and just agitate it every now and then, you know, call it a jerk, and then you uh, wring it out, then let it dry, uh, let it like drip dry, and then maybe throw it in the, I throw mine in the dryer because, you know, uh, we're the Adams family basically, and rust layer, and a, like a, a black based grime layer, and then some mechanical distress, and then a lighter grime pass to 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 bring it together a little more and, and get the get the grime into the areas where I've distressed it so uh, so that's that 
I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it. So you should comment and like the video. You should subscribe and you should share it. And you should rent a billboard um, in your hometown with just atomicpuke.com on it. And people will be like, what the hell is that? And then they'll go to my site and they'll look at things and they'll buy stuff and they'll subscribe to my Instagram and my Twitter and I'll be happy and thankful. Bye. Thanks for watching this.